everyone. Welcome back to uh, Football Update. Uh, I am Andy. And this is Robin. Uh, Rob, Robin, a lot of stuff's been going on since oh, yeah. we uh, last mm-hmm. got in here. Like, every day, you know, um, like, we, I had to deal with some personal stuff, mm-hmm. you know, first, but I've been uh, still keeping up to date with stuff. And, like, I mean, every other day, like, some... Like, usually, you know what I mean? Like, mm. this time of year, it does not seem to no. have much tr- stuff going on in the NFL before the drafts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just, I think, teams trying to fill holes, and then, um, yeah, about a week before the drafts, and it's been a month or so since we spoke, right around, right before the start of free agency, so every team's tried to make their roster um, as good as possible entering the draft, which is probably the most crazy weekend of the year, um, in terms of non um, game stuff going on in the NFL, yeah, and it's the divisions are just mm-hmm. what we thought um, some of these divisions would, were going to be like, or teams that we thought would be one way, you know, we thought mm-hmm. it was going to be just Kenny Pickett, for example, in mm-hmm. Pittsburgh, yeah, and then somehow just because they mm-hmm. over. Broncos overpaid Russell Wilson, yeah. and the Bears, you know, just Bears it up, and they had to get uh, Justin Fields out. Like mm-hmm. the Steelers' future seems right. You know, just a lot of toxic, turvy things going on in the, in the division. So, uh, yeah, what is your uh, insight in that? In your, in your opinion? Yeah, well, so we can start with you know the division. I think the you know the AFC North was probably the strongest in football last year. Um, had three playoff teams, and the fourth was a nine-win Cincinnati team that, you know, if Joe Burrow doesn't get hurt for about half the season and, you know, like, hurt to the point where it didn't, it affected his play a lot in the early portion of the season, they'd probably be in the playoffs as well. So um, Baltimore did lose some pieces, like a Jadavian Clowney, a Ronald Darby, um they were able to keep Justin Matabuke, um, had to move off OBJ, but they are the Ravens and they always find a way to get pieces and, you know, whether it's later in free agency or have the draft board come to them and they bring in Derrick Henry um, to be that power running back that they've kind of, that Gus Edwards was to an extent, but was never the big time back and hopefully he's a guy that in Derrick Henry they can depend on long term. Um, they recently signed the uh, the release Deontay Hardy um, to add depth to the receiving core. Um, Josh Jones, offense tackle, Gavin Noy um, as an edge player. And so, you know, just kind of making small moves here and there while also, you know, letting certain guys go in free agency and as a result getting future compensatory picks so then, you know, later years they can, you know, fill out the roster. Cincinnati, they... Um, are able to keep Teagans on the franchise tag, let go of Joe Mixon for a draft pick, get Zach Moss, bring in some tight ends like Mike Isecki, Tanner Hudson, Drew Sample, Trent Brown replaces Jonah Williams at tackle, um, bring in a couple veteran safeties, which is a huge issue for them last year, um, Sheldon Rankins replacing um, DJ Reader, the Browns, they continue to find ways you know, restructuring contracts except for Deshaun Watson's this time around, which maybe we can talk about in a bit how, you know, they restructured Nick Chubb and Jedrick Wills and Jared Judy and then signed him extension to lower cap stuff. Um, but they're still able to build up the roster. Deonta Foreman, Naheem Hines as backups to Nick Chubb and Jerome Ford. Um, Zedarius Smith, Shelby Harris, Maurice Hurst, bring those guys back to an incredible defensive line. And then, as you were talking about a little bit before, the Pittsburgh Steelers reshaping their entire quarterback room. Last year it was Pickett, Mitch Trubisky, um, Mason Rudolph. Now it's Russell Wilson on a veteran minimum, uh, Justin Fields on a, you know, sixth conditional fourth potentially, and then Kyle Allen. And then they bring in guys who have familiarity with the new offense coordinator, Arthur Smith, Van Jefferson, Cordero Patterson, Michael Pruitt as weapons. Bring in Patrick Queen from Baltimore. Um, Dante Jackson, they trade. They acquire in a trade where they let go of Deontay Johnson, who 
was productive at times, but also someone that was unhappy with how much or how little he didn't get the ball. Um, so that's kind of a review of what teams have done in the um, AFC North in free agency. What were your thoughts and who do you think kind of made a jump up or anything, or do you think it's still going to be uber competitive across the board? And this is why I love, this is why mm-hmm. during the dark times, uh, me and Robin are millennials. Mm-hmm. So uh, from 2000 to 2015, so, uh, 17, I guess, you know, mm-hmm. just had those years of mediocrity. So you always found another team to really root for during that time. But uh, mm-hmm. I, I mean, just in general, as a football fan, me and Robin love watching mm-hmm. all, all of it. You know, I'm an addict, I'll be honest. But, uh, mm-hmm. The North is just, it feels like it's the last breath of like what the NFL used to be. It is mm. a rough and tough division. And anybody, one of them can be one of the worst teams, for example, in, in, in like the NFL season. One of them can be the best. Mm-hmm. But when they go together, the worst team could win just because they yeah. don't know each other that much. And like, as you know, it's like a defensive you know race as well as a non-race for offense just because, you know, you just got to not only destroy their guys, you, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Oh, I, yeah, guys, I'm just going to be a little excited about football, mm-hmm. <laughs> especially at the draft coming yeah. up. Mm-hmm. But uh, I'd say starting with the Browns, what, what they did was inter- very interesting moves. Like, they showed they have some pieces that, you know, because great Chubb did that. Um, my one big concern, though, before I go into a few others, is – they just, I, I love Do- Dorsey as a quarterback's coach. As, mm. I think as he proved, he, in my opinion, you know, I'm, I'm, he's a nice guy. He was a little detrimental, I think, to Josh's, uh, yeah. <clears throat> Josh's ability and growth, you know, and we'll talk about later uh, mm. when we talk about the Bills, my, my thoughts on the new offense and stuff. But um, I just hope uh, Stefanski calls the plays because yeah. that's be interesting. But, like, they're, they're kind of going in as, like, this is Watson's uh, third third year of the Browns. Yep, yep. I think he played six or seven that first, you know, year, and then last year they're eight and four with him starting games. Now I think there's only one or two that I feel like you can say, okay, that kind of looks like twenty seventeen through twenty twenty Deshaun Watson, but you know, injuries and inconsistency, you know. Yeah, it's just all things like it's like an awe of him. You like you convince mm-hmm. them not to go with Joe Flacco. Like you guys, okay, mm-hmm. this you know, and it's interesting to see if Ju- I, you know, again, I, I have nothing but love for Judy. You know, I, I mm-hmm. really do hope like he can prove maybe in a different system he'd be a number one receiver. But like mm-hmm. as one of the sayings we like to say from uh, Doctor Strange, the bill comes due. Yeah, because like, mm-hmm. the Wilson one. Right, I'll say right now is seems like the worst trade slash signing increase in NFL history. But mm. to me, it's just if Watson falls short, I, I don't think it's the worst there. Just because yeah. uh, you had Baker and just mm. when you go down go down the FC South, Baker just proved you know he can he can still ball pretty decently. Mm-hmm. But uh, uh, give me very interesting. Uh, the Bengals, um, I, I, I have a, what do you feel about Higgins? Do you think he will stay, or do you think he'll trade, or do you think he'll come and play this year? I think he will play on that one-year tag. I don't think the Bengals will ever move him, certainly not to a contender. Um, could they move him to a lower-tier AFC, NFC team? Maybe, but I also feel like with as deep the receiver class is in this draft, you don't really want to give up a pick and then pay money on top of it for as good as Higgins has been. He's never proven for more than like a four or five grain stretch that he can be a number one consistently. Um, so that's probably why. And, you know, there's so many other receivers that are looking for new deals. Um, you know, just today there was stuff about both um, Cortland Sutton for the Broncos and Darius Lane for the Giants not wanting to um, go to voluntary camp and wanting new contracts. And that doesn't take into account guys like Brandon Ayuk, Justin Jefferson, C.D. Lamb, you know. So I, I don't anticipate them making a move with him unless they just 
find a receiver they fall in love with in the draft who they think day one could be the two, and then they figure out something from there. But I don't see it happening. And, you know, that's mm. the one thing. Like, again, mm. it is fun to kind of give our thoughts on the divisions. But it, as they say, it's look, super early because, mm. again, on paper, it seems like the Bills are screwed right now, for example. Mm. But it's the draft is, is like yep. – Oh my well guys <laughs> yeah. at one week away. Yep. Uh, one, mm-hmm. one week, one day. So like the draft can sometimes completely help fill like all the big needs on mm-hmm. teams depending on what pieces they need. So yep. uh it's, it's it's a little hard, you know, because uh, the Bengals did, did some solid things and you know maybe I just don't have a good view on Mm. I think we'll go back to the year, like in the you know Burrow's prime. If I really do, mm. think they get really good protection for him. Like, that's yeah. Really neat. But um, again, uh, I'm sorry, Ryan. What, what were their uh, additions again on, on offense? Uh, so they did lose Jonah Williams to the Cardinals, but then they brought in on a very cheap deal Trent Brown to play right tackle. Um, Zach Moss and a running back to replace. You know, mixing. Okay. That's that was. A, I am anyone listening? That is that that is a smart like yeah. second, third, maybe fourth round running back in fantasy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's. Uh, but th- th- yeah, that's a that's a good because they lost uh, Mixon if I remember. Correctly. Yep, yep, and then defense getting Geno Stone and Von Bell at safety to go with um, Dax Hill. I believe Jordan Battle. So they've really reshaped that safety room after they had lost. Um, Jesse Bates last year and Von Bell, but Von Bell getting cut from the Panthers and then signed to a small deal yeah. to come back to Cincy. This, oh, I'm sorry, I, uh, you, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, you're good, you're good. <laughs> um, um, but that's the thing, it's like, I'm kind of glad we're, we're facing the mm. Ravens this year. And mm. people who love Lamar, don't, just don't kill me yet, just hear, hear me out. I'm kind of happy the Ravens won the division that set of the that set of the Bengals just because until we see it like Burrow, you know, he has if he has enough weapons, you know, yeah. there, there's there's mm. still that uncertainty. Whereas mm. I, I honestly again, this is just my opinion, people think of this we mm. look at look at their their wins and losses, with the exception of I think was it one game? It's usually been Josh's Josh's game against Lamar. Like yeah. I think they mm. each other what, four or five times? Like, I know there was the one playoff I, game. There was one playoff game. There was a one game in 2019 where they played it to a one-score game, Buffalo, and lost. And then there was the um, 2022, 2022 week four game where Buffalo came back. So I believe Buffalo is 2-1 and one in those um, Ravens-Bills games. Or unless you count Josh Allen's rookie year. Which I mean, well, I think he came in like halfway in because of um, how bad Peterman was in that opener. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry about that. Yeah, so uh, I do agree with you that I think there are some times with Baltimore that they let some games go by, and even the AFC Championship against the Chiefs, you would have thought they're the more physical team, um, the team that can dominate to their will, and sometimes they don't play that way. And they did lose some pieces on the old line, but it does sound like they feel good about Daniel Falele at right tackle, which is why they let go of Morgan Moses in a trade with the Jets. Um, you know, they've built kind of the backup offensive line to kind of come in this year and play up. And, you know, they have the opportunity to improve that old line in other places in the draft. Um, I feel like when they play to their ability and to their will and enforce on other teams, they're as good as any team in the league. And last year, they it kind of felt like a massive missed opportunity, but you're always going to be there with the healthy Lamar um, in contention. Although that division makes it super, super tough to go year in, year out as the dominant one seed. Mm-hmm. Again, I'm just I'm just thinking it's just very tough for me to always pick on which North team will win. But mm-hmm. 
like I said, that, that's gonna be a good game for the Bills. And then uh, to me, the most fascinating of that division, which mm-hmm. again with this division, I I think we can all agree every one of those teams mm-hmm. have an opportunity to somehow get that number one seed in that division mm-hmm. to win that division, just be, because how tough they put they play each other. But uh, yeah. For, for me, the most fascinating one is is definitely Pittsburgh. Though. Yeah, you started off mm-hmm. with Kenny Pickett, mm-hmm. which you know, I, I do want to give say one thing for Kenny Pickett. He had mm-hmm. Matt Canada as his, his mm-hmm. coach yeah. for the first mm-hmm. few years, you know. But at the same time, he kind of torched any chance for the time being, you know, yeah. wanting to trade out, and it just was the perfect situation for Pittsburgh. They got Russell Wilson, who mm-hmm. as we saw was playing a lot better than he was the year before mm-hmm. and he just wasn't uh, <clears throat> uh excuse me uh, sean payton's uh mm-hmm. style of quarterback and then also uh because of the trade with the panthers last year the bears got the number one team falling in their lap you know mm-hmm. i still have in the opinion that they should have kept fields and get marvin harrison jr but you know mm-hmm. Again, we'll, we'll see what happens there. Yeah. But yeah, so Pittsburgh is pretty comfortable. Like, you got both of them on a few years. Uh, let's honestly, uh, Fields is uh, three years left on his contract. No, he actually um, he has the one year and then the fifth year option, right. um, yeah, which will probably be declined. Time. Yeah. Because it's about like. I, honestly, I, I could see Pittsburgh like. Uh, picking it up, you know, because mm-hmm. they have not just the potential of fields, but they're both mm-hmm. very similar. So even if Russell doesn't want to actively, you know, trade yeah. him, you know, but like you watch, like look at, look at Rogers and mm-hmm. uh, Favre and Rogers and Love, you know, you, if you sit around someone, you follow, you, you follow, watch tape with them and all that stuff, you know, mm-hmm. that could turn them, bring their game to the next level. So, it's it's gonna be very fascinating uh, this offense of the Steelers this year. I'm actually gonna be talking about it with uh, a friend of mine in a few weeks on one of his podcasts. But, nice. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, and then the defenses got uh, great additions. Uh, so I, it just it seems at, for the first time since uh, Ben was, mm-hmm. mm, I would say what seventeen eighteen was the last really kind of good Ben year we had, mm-hmm. if I remember correctly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Jesus, but it's been a while. Um, yeah, it's just, it's a very interesting new beginning for yeah. the Steelers of the Steelers way. Yeah, it's going to be probably once again the one massive uh, uber competitive division. Going to the AFC South, um, we have four teams, all with you know young quarterbacks all on rookie deals um you know trying to make the most of their situations and i think they all were kind of active but in different ways um the texans probably the one that went big game hunting the most um you know getting joe mixon on a small deal with the Bengals. uh noah brown coming back getting stefan Diggs from the buffalo bills uh, bringing back a Dalton Schultz, adding to the defensive line, uh, rookie stud Will Anderson. They got next to him Danico Autry inside, Foley Fatukasi inside, uh, Derek Barnett, and big fish uh, Daniil Hunter um, as outside pass rushers. And then kind of filled out the rest of the secondary and roster, um, bringing back some of the crew and also bringing back Jeff Okuda and C.J. Henderson. So, um, you know, trying to make a run with C.J. Stroud, proving to be a potential top-tier young quarterback in the NFL. Uh, The Colts, they were active in the sense that they basically brought back their entire roster, save for Gardner Minshew, replacing him with Joe Flacco, um, bringing back Michael Pittman Jr., signing DeForest Buckner to a new extension, which helped them with cap stuff. Um, Signed Raquan Davis from the Dolphins. That was the one big outside guy that they got. Um, Brought back Kenny Moore on extension. Zaire Franklin at linebacker signed a new extension. Julian Blackman at safety. So again, building from within, keeping their studs, and then also re-signing Grover Stewart. So keeping that D-line together. 
the Jaguars um, trying to go more of a tough team approach. It looked like they were trying to find a way to both get, you know, more at receiver and also keep Calvin Ridley and the Titans, which we'll talk about in a second, going bigger with the contract for Calvin Ridley. They get Gabe Davis, the Jacksonville Jaguars do, along with Devin DuVernay, Joseph DeGuara, brought back, brought back, excuse me, Dearness Johnson, brought back Ezra Cleveland at guard, Mitch Morse, um, let go from Buffalo. He is the new center. Signing Josh Allen, the other Josh Allen, to a massive five-year, $150 million extension. So him and Trayvon Howard as a duo. Foye Luwakon signing a new deal to help with cap stuff. Um, Trent Baalke, the GM who used to be with the Niners, getting one of his old draft picks in. Eric Armstead on the D-line. So helping out with both Howard and Josh Allen. And then Ronald Darby at corner, Darnell Savage at safety. And then for the Titans, who were the fourth place team, but at times a scrappy one, they let go of Derrick Henry, but they bring in Tony Pollard at running back, sign uh, Calvin Ridley to a four-year, $92 million contract. Pretty high, but hopefully he helps um, Will Levis out. Mason Rudolph as the backup. Bring back Nick westbrook Akine at receiver as well. Lloyd Cushenberry and Sadiq Charles at center. Um helping out the O-line, Sebastian Joseph Day on the D-line, linebacker Kenneth Murray, two big-time corners, Chidubi Awozier signed from the Bengals, three years, $36 million, and then LeJarius Sneed acquired for a 2025 third and a swap of seventh-round picks, signed to a four-year, $76.4 million contract, and then Nick Folk at kicker. So those are kind of the recap of all the moves in the AFC South, what do you make of the division? Um, like the North, like mm-hmm. kind of predicting them, like who, like you're doing like a hierarchy of of the division. It's a little tough, but it, but it's different. Mm-hmm. It's like because we're we're at a point in the South where mm-hmm. we're finding the identity of of the teams. Um, right now, like for example. The Texans, like that, that was the most incredible surprise. Yeah. Like, turnaround. <laughs> I, I, like, they just got they had so much talent come to them so quickly. You know? mm-hmm. And they got Stephon Diggs, which you know we'll get more into on the Bills side when we get to the Bills. But uh, you bring him along with Tank Dell <laughs> and um, and I, I apologize. I'm Nico Collins. Just they've turned into a power team really quickly. Yeah. Uh, I, I could see them moving up or around at anywhere in the drafts. Uh, so that's exciting. And, and then right behind them, like, mm-hmm. like a complete turnaround after like the like, new culture change. You had the Colts. Mm-hmm. Anthony Richardson. You, you hope he doesn't become an injury injury prone like he was. You know. Mm-hmm. Uh, last year, let me think. Another reason why we need grass, you know, I'll always uh, be one of those people that die on that sword, having mm-hmm. the fields grass. But uh, he was incredible, like you said. You got uh, they brought back uh, all their top receivers, mm-hmm. um, and then uh, I, I apologize, guys. My my head is really mm-hmm. foggy today. I'm trying to try run the players. Uh, the, the, the running back for for the Colts, the Jonathan Taylor. Yeah, Jonathan Taylor. Yeah, sorry. Uh, long day, long day at work, guys. Sorry about that. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah John and Taylor. So they're they're an exciting team. Uh, so yeah, uh, with the Colts, you had um, uh, it's so you have a very new team, and mm-hmm. I, I'm really curious what they're going to do uh, in the draft. There's a lot of needs there, but uh, mm-hmm. a lot of great signings, and you know, keeping players in uh, the. Biggest wild card for me, I would say, in, in the South right now is the Titans. Like, mm. they, they, have, they again, it's on paper. You know, we don't know. It's really early, as we said, but mm-hmm. they're where they are in the draft and you know, the amount of capital they have. They have a chance to be a sneaky good team. Like there was, mm-hmm. I saw points where Will Levis had some real connection mm. with. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins, yeah. yeah. This year. And you, you signed Calvin Ridley to a big deal. 
Bills. So you, I, I think, you know, obviously you would still have uh, uh, Hopkins be your number one, Ridley would be a solid number two. Mm-hmm. Uh, they still have not a lot of cap uh, after the draft. So they're a team that I, like, I really want to wait to see my opinion on just because, like I said, there's so many pieces they need need to be fixed uh, on their team, but like they have so many opportunities. Uh, so they're they were in what the top six or seven? Teams they're none. Uh, yes, they're up there. Yes. Yeah, it's crazy. Mm. And then uh, the Jaguars, I think, are. I still think you know Herbert has. Got Herbert. I apologize. Uh, um, J- uh, Trevor Lawrence. Uh, mm. There we go. Getting the drafts mixed up. Mm. Uh, uh, I think you know he, he, you get more weapons around him. Yeah. You know, uh, I'm trying to still see what 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 do you think their offense is like? Like you said, they're they're kind of having an identity issue. You mm. know, so they have they have the talent. Mm-hmm. Like like you said, I think they they, they kind of starting to get it on the defense. Like you said, they re-signed their Josh Allen, uh, mm-hmm. had another big signing. Uh, and again, I, I I wonder how they'll use Gabe if they if they will use Gabe how Gabe should have been used. Mm-hmm. In my opinion, as like a fifty fifty receiver, he's really good. Uh, Mitch Morse will really bolster your line because he he kept getting hit a lot last year. So mm-hmm. I, I think that's a big need they should do in the draft uh so uh, for me uh i have a feeling that just i i will say now that i thinking about it and i just i think what's incredible is we have the chance of every year mm-hmm. seeing twice a year battles with trevor Lawrence, yeah. uh uh against the texans uh mm-hmm. then you've got anthony richardson uh, it's just as a football fan, it's just going to be a very exciting division to uh, see, and uh, it'll be very exciting to watch because uh, that, that's the division Buffalo is playing this year. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, that's one that you know. Last time the Bills faced the AFC South was twenty twenty one. They went one and three. So you know, for our sakes, hopefully they play better against it, but it won't be easy because you know. All four of those teams, young quarterbacks on rookie deals, spending big to try and win with them. So, yeah, that'll be maybe that'll be up there with the North as you know the top AFC division and one of the better ones in the league. Uh, going to a division that you know um, has been dominated by one team for a while, the AFC West. Uh, the Denver Broncos again letting go of Russell Wilson. Eating fifty million dead cap this year and thirty next year, they were able to go from one and five to eight and nine at the end of last year. So some good things there, but um, you do wonder about their flexibility in this year and next year and trying to build um, back up the roster. They get Michael Burton back at fullback, Lil Jordan Humphrey resigned at receiver, Josh Reynolds two year deal worth up to fourteen mil. Adam Troutman brought back a tight end. Um, some small signings here and there. Cody Barton at linebacker. Brandon Jones at safety. Resigning P.J. Locke and then bring back Will Lutz at the kicker spot. Um, the Kansas City Chiefs, the reigning two-time defending champion, trying to be a 3 P team. Um, they move on from Blaine Gabbard as the backup quarterback. Bringing Carson Wentz, who had a great final start with the Rams and half a year to learn under McVay. Now he learns under Andy Reid. Bring back Clyde edwards as the backup running back. Sign Marquise Brown to a one-year deal. I think seven mil guaranteed worth up to 11. So, you know, trying to get that um, one-year bumped to maybe get a long-term contract in future years. Sign Irv Smith at tight end. Bring back Chris Jones. Five-year, $158.75 million contract. Um, so keeping maybe the most important player outside of Mahomes on that team um, to, you know, winning three championships and winning the last two. Derek Nani back at defense tackle as well. True Tranquil re-signed at linebacker. Um, they did trade Legereus Sneed as their, you know, 
uh, best outside corner, but they do have a pretty great one in Trent McDuffie who can play outside inside. Um, bring back, bring in Matt Ariza to replace Tommy Townsend at punter for as, as of now. Um, the Las Vegas Raiders signing Gardner Minshew two years, $25 million, make one of the big uh, free agent splashes in Christian Wilkins, four years under 10 mil at even the tackle, put him next to um, Max Crosby, Alexander Madison, Amir Abdullah brought in as running backs behind Zamir White, Andre James signed three years, 24 million at center, bringing Cody White here from the bears and then re-signed Adam Butler and John Jenkins as defense tackles. And then the LA chargers in the Jim Harbaugh era, um, re-signed Easton sick, Easton stick, um, Gus Edwards, two years, $6.5 million um, to be one of their backs. Will Disley signed at tight end, along with Hayden Hurst, Bradley Bozeman as center, Puna Ford as interior lineman, Denzel Perryman and Troy Dye as linebackers, Christian Fulton uh, signed at corner, and then re-signed Alohi Gilman at safety. So... The AFC West, um, a couple years ago, we had talked up that division as, you know, all these teams are low enough to, you know, hopefully compete with the Chiefs. In the last two years, it really hasn't panned out that way. Has, you know, any of the teams really done anything to make you change off that? Or we forgot to mention with, um, I forgot to mention specifically the Chiefs, you know, the Rasheed Rice off-field car incident. Don't know if that'll be a suspension for any of this year, there is the, you know, criminal case and then the legal or civil case. And, you know, best wishes to all the victims in that um, incident. But what do you think, you know, aside from that, what do you think about the AFC West? I feel, well, first and foremost, mm-hmm. you know, I'll, I'll give them this. Until someone kicks them off, mm-hmm. they... they uh, they deserve to be up there. You yeah. Know, uh, they won three. Andy Reid is a genius. And he had Mahomes. It's a perfect storm. That being said, the Rasheed Rice thing is is a little concerning. Mm. You know, if, if he's suspended, if so, how many games? I uh, wonder how they're doing the drafts. You know, mm. they their idea is okay. Like, you know, because, yeah, you do have Travis Kelsey, who's so yeah. good. You know, he's almost like an elite receiver. But you at least got to give him one or two guys that are so like consistent, you know. And again, mm-hmm. that being said, they did add that they had they added Hollywood Brown. Uh, defense, some of it stayed the same, some left. Uh, so I, I think they're going to be what they were mm-hmm. this year. Like they're just they, again, I got to give them props. Like they beefed up their defense yeah. enough for their offense to you know try to find themselves in the next few years. Uh, mm-hmm. The I'm going to go to the other wild, the biggest wild, this to me the biggest wild card team is, is the Raiders. And mm-hmm. I've said it to you, Robin, multiple times. I've said it to a few other friends in my life. Like, if you want to, it's almost perfect that in a way that the Raiders went to Vegas because mm-hmm. they are the biggest wild card team mm-hmm. out there. They have, yeah. they have raw talent on there. And I'll give it to, to him. the new head coach there. He has a culture there. Like, it yeah. really does feel like a Raiders culture, almost. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, and Tony uh, Pierce, yeah. You got, again, I'm, I'm not making fun of him. I think it's a cool nickname because I, I mm-hmm. love that movie growing up. You have Farba as the quarterback right mm-hmm. now. Uh, they have a high pick, so maybe they, they could sneak up and get a quarterback or maybe sign a veteran. Uh, like, they got Devontae Adams. Uh mm-hmm. So again, I, I at worst, like you know, I think they'll win a few games at best. Maybe there was maybe they, maybe they can sneak into the wild card. I, again, very mm-hmm. exciting team. Uh, again, it just wow. Like there's just the draft. There's a lot of teams right now that mm-hmm. are really missing a lot of pieces. So, uh, but uh, that's the Raiders. Uh, to me, the, the Broncos, like, they're, this is their tank year. You know, yeah, it could be. Thing didn't work. And again, this, this mm-hmm. to me just shows how good Sean Payton is. Like, you've got double the production of Russ. You know, mm-hmm. he just is not working his system, uh, working that system. I, I don't think they're going to get a quarterback because 
at first you felt, you know, because they were ahead of the Vikings, they were going to get that quarterback, mm-hmm. uh, one of the, uh, the fourth best one potentially here. But now the Vikings have two picks, so yeah, I can see them trading back and just getting more pieces. Like this is the draft where the it's like what the Bills did; they're, they're building the foundation right now. Mm-hmm. Like there's so many. Uh, like receivers, you have so many in all these rounds, and as as we know, some of the best receivers in the, in the league right now yeah. are later round picks, like even day mm-hmm. three picks. So, uh, be very interesting to see what that team is. But uh, I, I love that's good sports. Uh, my, mm-hmm. my guy Brandon Perna, uh, I think he's in for a tough year. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, it's gonna be interesting <laughs> to see what that team looks like. And then you have the Chargers, and again, Harbaugh is a sharp cookie guy, and yeah. <laughs> it irks me because I'll give him this: he got he got kicked in the nards multiple mm. times by my Ohio State. Yeah, and sooner or later he found a way, and he kicked us. I think was it three times? Yeah, yeah. Three yeah. In a row, and he won a national title. And some people at my work were saying some things like he wasn't that great. Was like. People forget that he was kind of having a power struggle. Uh, yeah. At, oh, yeah. At the end mm-hmm. of the time. This is a guy that not only took his team to, to a Super Bowl, but he went to multiple NFC championship games. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, three, in, three in a row, yeah. Yeah, three in a row. Heck yeah. And I'm just, I'm, I'm really curious. Like, you could even move back, like, 10 picks in the first round. And you could, for, for pieces, maybe get a receiver or some things. Or, again, I just, I, I'm just trying to see how Jim Harbaugh, you know, is going to do this. You know what I mean? Mm. It's, uh, it's, if I was saying I, I would go for one of the top three receivers, because, again, you got rid of, that's the big yeah. thing right now for the Chargers. You got rid of their two best receivers, you know. Because you couldn't get Allen to uh, move under cap, so yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then Mike yeah, Williams, yeah. About that in, in our next uh, podcast, but a few mm-hmm. days before the draft, but I, I have a feeling they're mm-hmm. just a stay at receiver. But uh, I mm-hmm. think they could be competitive, and yeah, I, I'll give one thing for Herbert's credit: but the, the games he played the the uh, the Chiefs the past couple of years, mm. like he's he got banged up in them. Yeah, like there was a few games that he was going toe to toe. You know, mm. so I I could I could see an upset this year in the Chargers, but I, I think out of next to the Chiefs, I think they have the big, the brightest future. Yeah, that you know. Um... That one division is probably the one with the most question marks, but I think if, you know, teams answer them, it can be a very intriguing division, even though Kansas City has dominated it for the past few years. And, you know, there are some teams that got their number last year. You know, Denver got them once, the Raiders got them once, but we'll see if those are aberrations or if there's something to that. And then finishing out a loaded AFC, we look at the East. Um, You know, the Bills had a very busy off season, both letting people go and also trying to bring some new people in. Um, the one big one, uh, the Stefan Diggs trade, they trade Stefan Diggs and a 2024 sixth and then 2025 fifth, I believe, um, to the Houston Texans for a 2025 second round pick that is originally from the Minnesota Vikings. Um, they ran Mitch Dabrisky as the backup, Matt Collins signing a one-year deal, Curtis Samuel three-year, twenty-four million dollar deal up to thirty mil. Um, then Al Collins was a move about a week ago. He can play tackle, guard. Deion Dawkins signing a new contract, uh, three years, sixty point five mil, which also helped them out cap room wise. Brought back David Edwards, who's a sixth offensive lineman and could compete to be a starter at guard. Will Clapp signed as the backup center. Behind now, Connor McGovern replacing Mitch Morse. Find a way to bring back two um, good parts of the defensive line. AJ Epinesa, two year deal worth up to twenty million. Uh, starts at about, I believe, twelve. Um, Casey Tuhill, another edge player. Daquan Jones, two years, sixteen mil, up to eighteen. They bring in Austin Johnson from the Chargers. Um, 
Nicholas Moreau, linebacker Deshaun Williams, another interior lineman signed Teron Johnson, three year, $31 million extension. Cam Lewis to a two year deal, um, sign safety Mike Edwards and um, from the Chiefs, and then Taylor Rapp um, to a three year deal, but it's really a one year deal with a bunch of you know, option years and void years. The Dolphins, initially, their free agency started out rough, losing um, Christian Wilkins and I believe one other big-time player. Oh, it was Robert Hunt at guard. But they rebound. They bring back Berheem Mostert and Selvin Ahmed at running back. Uh, Braxton Berrios and River Craycraft brought back a receiver. Signed Johnny Smith and Jody Fortson at tight end. Kendall Lamb and Jack Driscoll at the tackle spots. Um, they restructured um, Turn Armstead, basically brought back the rest of the O-line except for Connor Williams, who's coming off an ACL. Shaq Barrett um, brought back at, or excuse me, brought in as a new defensive end after he let go of Emmanuel Ogba. Tayer Tart at defensive tackle, um, maybe to help out with the loss of uh, Christian Wilkins to some extent. Jordan Brooks at linebacker. Um, Anthony Walker, also a linebacker, brought in Kendall Fuller. That was a decent signing from Washington, two years, $16.5 million, uh, to replace the released Xavier Howard. They signed Jordan Poyer to one-year deal along with Saran Neal and Nick Needham. And then the next, the New England Patriots bring in Jacoby Reset, one-year, $8 million. Uh, Antonio Gibson at running back, bring back... Kendrick Bourne uh, to a three-year deal. K.J. Osborne signing from Minnesota. Jalen Rager re-signed. Hunter Henry re-signed at tight end. Three years, 27 mil. Austin Hooper brought in as the backup tight end. Michael Owenu re-signed. Three years, 57 million. Um, some more offensive linemen, including Chukwuma Okorafor. Anthony Jennings re-signed um, at defensive end. Also, Josh Uche. Sione Taki Taki um, signed from Cleveland. They resign uh, Kyle Duggar, four year, $58 million. Uh, one more versatile safeties in the league. And then the last team, the New York Jets, sometimes always in the news for either weird stuff, but they bring in they bring in Tyrod Taylor to be the backup quarterback, two year up to 18 mil, one year up to 15 mil for Mike Williams, John Simpson from Baltimore in at guard. Uh, Morgan Moses acquired in trade with Baltimore. One-year deal up to $20 million for Tyron Smith. They trade a 2026 conditional third-rounder that could be a second um, for edge player Hassan Reddick to replace the loss of Bryce Huff. Uh, Javon Kinlaw and Salman Thomas brought in on the defensive line. And then Ashton Davis and Isaiah Oliver brought into the secondary. So that is a review of kind of all the moves in the AFC East. Um, the one biggest story was uh, Stefan Diggs moving on. And there's a lot of talk, or at least there was, you know, a couple weeks ago when the trade was made about how the relationship between one of the, you know, best QB receiver duos of the last three, four years, how it broke down. Um, earliest known tension was the week of the 2022 divisional playoffs against the Bengals, according to the founder of Cover One, Eric Turner. Um, on the one specific play that Josh Allen didn't throw to Stephon Diggs before the, um, you know, blow up on the sideline, um, uh, they had worked on that play in practice and had connect on it, and Josh Allen said that he would find him during practice, and for a reason... Uh, the play didn't go that way, so um, you know that was reasoning for the blow up. And then Tim Graham of the Athletic, who's been around the Bills as a B reporter for I want to say twenty five, thirty years, originally with Buffalo News, um, said on his podcast shortly after the Diggs trade that there was a talk at the locker at the end of the Week One loss to the Jets, where Allen was being consoled by other teammates, including Cal Allen. And for whatever reason, Diggs said something to him, and Josh Allen snapped at him, um, you know. And then, you know, there was the trade, and maybe it was 
forced on Digzen to some extent. So first thing is, um, what do you think of that whole story? And then also, how do you view the AFC East? Um, do you still view it as Buffalo's division, or there's still some work to be done there? Um, hmm. I think I'll, I'll, I'll hope my Ben Bills ringtone just went off. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I think I'll, I'll, I'll definitely save that part mm-hmm. uh, for last, just because. That, okay. That's that because I have a little pa- I'm not gonna lie, I have a little passion in that. Mm-hmm. In that uh, but uh, but uh, for the division. Uh, I, I right now I think I think the one team that's gonna be mm-hmm. at best decent at worst like going through a rebuild is the Patriots like mm-hmm. they have a pretty decent foundation with some solid yeah. players like Belichick always had good works working soldiers or mm-hmm. you know what I mean working yeah. knees, uh in his team uh so they also got the third pick mm-hmm. they can get one of the top three quarterbacks or they can get mm-hmm. like a draft hall maybe that's the team that maybe the vikings are desperate enough they move up there that when we talk about it next week mm-hmm. uh, that, that's going to be a very interesting thing to see but uh uh i think we both agree Dol- uh no sorry not dolphins pats uh mm-hmm. definitely going through a rebuild yeah um uh, the jets uh, this is the roll of nothing here mm-hmm. like, oh uh, yeah <laughs> like I have a feeling, you know, unless we're going to talk about it next week, maybe the Bills move or someone moves up, but like, mm. it's either going to be, I think, a lineman to protect mm. Rodgers or to get one of the top receivers. Yeah. Because, he, he, like we said, he, he, he got uh, one of the receivers coming in from uh, Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have their great young receiver. Um, and if, if Rodgers can perform, you know, it's easy. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. Again, we, he, we have, he hasn't really played in two years, so it's mm. it's it's interesting. And in, uh, from what I've heard, uh, the defense is getting pretty pretty pissed at the offense, you know, because of mm. how incredible that you know that that uh, <clears throat> defense is. Yeah, uh, I will say uh, just the breaking piece of glass. That was a great signing by uh, New York for uh, Tyrod. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So uh, yeah, they're. It's it's it could be the team the Eagles team from ten or uh, ten or thirteen years ago that that uh, that super teams supposedly mm-hmm. yeah actually, or like they fall flat or, or they could be a great contender yeah uh, I just I don't see Rodgers a year or two after this so if I remember mm. like if, if it doesn't go well this year there's rumblings that they might axe the whole thing. Mm. Uh, yeah. Going to the Dolphins, uh, they were they their tank years ago really helped them. Mm. Uh, now did they get that? They did a ton of trades, you know, to bring pieces. But I think that's like we said, bill comes due. Like, yeah, they did draft some people with those picks, but they use a lot of those picks they trade for to trade for the lead player, for example, Tyree Kill, mm. uh, Bradley Chubb. You yeah. Know, the, the Waddle, yeah. That, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, the problem is, it's like, they grab so many pieces, like, again, mm. they're a fast team, but like, they, like, think of it as a car, they just put so many pieces to drive to catch up with the Bills. They didn't, mm. again, like we say, the foundation, you know, as you see, like, if you get a few of their, a few injuries happen, mm. they, they start falling apart. And the other things, they lost a lot of people this year. You yeah. Know, you have to, you're going to have to sign with Tua. Mm, yeah. Really, yeah, and then Tyreek only has a two or three years left, he says. Yeah. You know, so uh, it's, it's going to be interesting. And, and they also have a lot of key things on de- key pieces on defense. Uh, mm-hmm. I think uh, their defense might be a, not as good as uh, last year. But then again, mm-hmm. you still have to see the draft. Yeah. Um, to the Bills, uh, this sucked, but it, you know, it had to mm-hmm. happen. You know, yeah. I think. My biggest issue in the past was, I think, the biggest setback was Dorsey. Yeah. You know, I just, he never adjusted his plays. But, um, you know, like, on to Diggs, you know, let all relationships sometimes things mm. end, you know, uh, badly, you know. And, I, and this is the thing, like, people say, yeah, you lost, but, like, 
there's the 13 second game. Yeah. Uh, that, that year also is the year that Trey, you know, tours ACL. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then the year before, uh, two years ago, we had, uh, that was when we didn't play uh, the Chiefs with the Bengals. That was like, mm. not only all the season any injuries, Bond got out, yeah. uh, a few other people. Trey was still just coming back. And then you had DeMar's yeah. thing. And I, I really think the winds routed sails that mm. year. Yeah. And you came to this year, our our defense was shredded. Like, yeah. We had pr- practice team people in. And we still almost won the game, and <laughs> yeah. truly another wide right. Yeah, which, uh, I think they call. Aren't they calling it wide right too? Wide right too. I didn't know if they. I didn't hear that they had actually named it that, but that doesn't surprise me. And I don't know what you call the near deep ball to Stefan or the almost to Shakir if he Josh has a clean pocket or is able to step through it. Um. Yeah. Um. <laughs> That's actually why I was uh, getting to that. Like, mm. they were saying on uh, WGR, I can't remember who it was, mm-hmm. but uh, it might also might have been one of their guests. Like, the past few years, like, Stefan, uh, well, let me say the positive first. Mm-hmm. We got J- T- Stefan, yeah. Josh Stu's breakout year, his third year. And I think at that time, he was one of the top three receivers. And yeah. If it wasn't for Stefan Diggs, because I wanted to say this first before I mm-hmm. critique it, if it wasn't for him, I don't think Josh would be where he is now. Yeah. Like at this level, in this mental prime. Mm-hmm. Kind of like when Manning was in like 05 or 06, kind of when he went to that Super Bowl. Yeah. You know, but like, so thanks to him, Josh's ability that put his football cues better. Stefan's getting a little slower, you know, mm-hmm. and he was paying a lot, and it's to a point like, you, the Bills can uh, it, we even proved it. Look who who the top two receivers uh, we had: Kincaid, who I think is going to be incredible. Yeah. You have Shakir, who I think is going to be the new uh, you know slot slot guy. Yeah. Uh, Curtis Samuel, whose best year was with our the new offensive coordinator. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, the system he never had. Curtis Samuel never had a great quarterback, or it, it, mm-hmm. like it best he had a decent quarterback. Mm-hmm. So, and then they had the draft coming up. Um, so it's, it's going to be a reset year for the Bills. Like, is it mm-hmm. like they're a good enough team that I can confidently say, because this the way they play and this the way this team mm-hmm. is. And uh, I, I can really see them contending. At best, I think they can go to the Super Bowl. At, at worst, I think maybe you know, in the division. But, like, again, it's a slight adjustment here, but this is the one – advantage the Bills have, mm. you have Josh Allen at yeah. the peak of his abilities. Mm-hmm. And that that's and again, I s I'm one of the fans that kind of really go with stats like and this is not one look getting a little heated like the things with Josh, you know. Mm. It's like twenty years ago they were saying the same stuff about Peyton, but it's mm. just like and uh, it, this the stats don't lie. He like he's breaking so many records, you know, he just yeah. He is a phenomenal athlete, you know, and uh, I just think they're definitely going to get receivers. And like we said, you, you can have multiple receivers that were drafted in later rounds that could be elite receivers. So I, I'm really excited what the Bills are going to do. I was worried at first they might trade back, but like right now it's win-win for me. Like I could see them doing a uh, – if, if, if the board falls right, we're, we're going to get into it in details next week in our draft, but – well, if the board falls right, you know, and most of them mm-hmm. move up to get a quarterback or a team that needs a, a lineman, for example, mm-hmm. I think one of the receivers, again, because it, it all depends on where the, the Vikings are moving up to get somebody, you mm-hmm. know, because like you said, that the Patriots might last too big of a one. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I'm sorry, my, my throat's a little rough today, guys. Um, uh, you know, you can move mm-hmm. there, or the Cardinals. Mm-hmm. I think the Cardinals would be the first one to get receivers. So mm-hmm. I could see the Bills. Like again, they have a great relationship with the Giants. You know, that's mm-hmm. kind of around where the, the Fal- that famous Falcons trade with Julio yeah. Jones. Like the Bills are like either at the exact spot or right near that spot. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, and then at the same time, you have that with the. Uh, <clears throat> And today, uh, 
uh, whoever the I think it was the Browns that they, they traded with back then, the Falcons. Yes, yes, it was. Yeah, yes, it, yes, that's right. It was the Falcons. So you can do that. I can see them maybe with the Titans. So I would love it. Maybe get a Dunze. I uh, unless again, I, I'm pretty sure Marvin's going first. Just if it's, I think if it's hard mm. as that, but it's going to be interesting to see who who it is. But I would go up to get one of those top three, you know, if you could do two firsts and you got that second from the Vikings through uh, the uh, the Texans, or you can move somewhat up, you know, to in the top, you know, from like picks 10 to 20, you know, like you get the second prop of a uh, tier receivers. So how, how many would you say after the top three quarterback, uh, I'm sorry, not quarterback, receivers go, Robin, would you, to, would you say the next prop of, receivers would be picked because there's a lot of great uh, mm. players that aren't receivers in the draft this year around that time yeah so it is so it's going to be was it marvin adunze malik neighbors and then another lsu guy brian thomas is maybe four um Ad- adonai mitchell and xavier were the two texas guys um those could be the next guys and then you have lad mccoggy from georgia xavier the get from south carolina so, you know, there could be seven or eight guys, and I haven't even mentioned other guys that could sneak into that round one discussion. So there's the idea, oh, trade all that much to get that receiver. But you'd have to guarantee that that receiver is going to be, you know, Julio for people to be happy. And I know I don't blame Sammy Watkins for lack of production when the Bills made that trade up oh, years yeah, ago. And yeah. And, you know, I think at, at worst hmm. – at worst, we would have a, a decent receiver that, again, Josh mm-hmm. is at, his, at, at, at the prime of his level now. This is why I think yeah. his receivers are really work. You know, he will improve. He, here's what Brady is. at the, When Brady was at, got to his mental peak, per se. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, but like we said, he can maybe, they can maybe move up, maybe sit where they are. Yeah. Or, if you know, if you, you know there's, you got some very solid, receivers even pretty good receivers in the mm. second round maybe move back yeah you know? and you can build your, your arsenal because again we uh, i one thing i do want to say brandon bean is a hit is a secret genius i think mm. one of the best if not the best gm in <clears throat> in the league because again mm. he, he's been having to adjust stuff on the fly the past few years but we as we said he has a chance to draft a lot of people that can be future players like the, a lot of the players today were home mm. bred so this could be the like you said the new generation of the, the 2.0 bills under josh mm. you know uh which is very exciting yeah. um so uh i'm pretty excited i think the bills i think the bills have it division wise uh mm. and uh it, it's exciting but also frustrating because mm. i honestly don't know because Bean has the I'll say this, Bean has the balls to uh, <laughs> go up to to get a, to get a, like one of the top three, but uh, mm. I'm going to be very excited either way. And uh, and oh, I remember like I was saying uh, the part about the, the drafting some of the younger talent. We right now have uh, some players like you always do. You bring in for one or two years as, as a bridge player. So uh, very exciting. I think next year, what, what's our we get like fifty million in cap space, I think, around. I want to say so they get the thirty-one million, you know, dead cap hit this year for Svon, but he was going to count twenty-seven in the next two or three years. So that twenty-seven million comes off the books. So maybe yeah. they're thirty to fifty mil. I don't know ex- the exact numbers, but. Um. And you know, it's a win-win for both Stefan and the Bills. Mm-hmm. Like. I mean, look look at Allen. Allen got a, a, a fourth rounder from the, from the Chargers. Um, wasn't there? A, what, what did the, the uh, Broncos get? If I remember for Judy, uh, I think fifth and six. Yeah, fifth, fifth and six. Yeah. yeah, I think there might have been another one. Like that, that's a pretty. And Mari Cooper for a five long ago. Yeah. yeah. And it's it's the Vikings pick who mm-hmm. uh, they're starting. You know, their soft rebuild. Mm. So. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of ammunition, so uh, it'll be a very, very interesting year. It's it's gonna be exciting. Uh, I, mm-hmm. I really think the Bills are a bright future. And the last thing I do want to say, mm-hmm. and again, I'm not the guy that hates on fans, or it's just 
again, does it state we lost? Yeah, but like, mm-hmm. uh, it was like some of the negative stuff I hear, uh, just lastly before we uh, mm-hmm. sign off, guy, is like, he, he believe he's the only quarterback that has won back like multiple games against Mahomes, if I'm correct, right? There hasn't, well, except I think Tom. Yeah, I think, yeah. I I can't think of anyone multiple that's one. That that's actually a good one. I haven't heard of that one before. And and again, like this is what's exciting for us, not just year, this year guys, uh but for the next 5 or 6 years. Mm-hmm. I've been saying it, this is this generation's Brady Manning. Mm-hmm. Cuz again, it like we said it took Peyton what was it two or three tries until yeah. he broke, broke through. You know, so uh, it would be very exciting. Uh, so next week, guys, we're going to be talking uh, – not next week, I'm sorry. Uh, mm-hmm. Our part two of this week, there we go, mm-hmm. is going to be uh, on Friday. We're going to talk about the uh, NFC, uh, some uh, very interesting things. Uh, mm-hmm. Some divisions seem a little, a lot more solid than the other ones, whereas yeah. – uh, uh, well, other ones, like you said, like there's like half the teams this year are really – Depend, like you don't know what's going to happen until the draft is done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But uh, a lot of interesting stuff to, to, to get into. But uh, I'm Andy. And this is Robin. Have a good one.